In this video, I am going to give you a step-by-step -step actionable roadmap on how to overcome procrastination, even on tasks on which you have been sitting probably for weeks, maybe months, maybe years. At the end of this video, you will have a plan to overcome procrastination. And this plan is going to be based on psychology, complete science. A couple of days ago, my accountant, who does my income tax filing, he sent me an email saying, hey, can you please send me your bank statements so that his team can get started on preparing the income tax returns. Now it's been 10 days and what have I done in this last 10 days? Nothing. I'm just sitting on it. I have not sent him anything. Now you could say, I'm kind of procrastinating. In fact, who does not procrastinate? It's a universal thing. You could say there are two kinds of people in the world, those who procrastinate and those who lie, which means everybody procrastinates, all right? But the procrastination I just talked about, it's a bit of a harmless one. Like, you know, there is still time for me to send the bank statement. There's still a lot of time for filing the income tax returns. But in many cases, we procrastinate even when literally our life is at stake. We have to go to a doctor for a medical checkup and a lot of people just want to avoid doing it. We have to submit a project report. We have to work on something and deadline is just a couple of days away. Some important exam is coming up, but we are not working on it. We can cause ourselves unbelievable harm by this very simple thing like procrastination. So why does it happen? So in this video, I am going to give you a step-by-step -step actionable roadmap on how to overcome procrastination, even on tasks on which you have been sitting probably for weeks, maybe months, maybe years. At the end of this video, you will have a plan to overcome procrastination. And this plan is going to be based on psychology, complete science. All right. Now, let's start by understanding what is procrastination. What do you think it is? Very often we think of procrastination as, oh, it's just laziness. Maybe today I'll take it easy, I'll do it tomorrow. I'm just being lazy. It is not laziness. Procrastination is a problem of emotional regulation. In simple language, there are certain tasks which create a negative emotion. It could be fear, it could be stress, anxiety, unpleasantness, could be any of those things. And when something creates those unpleasant emotions, what do we want to do? What is our natural instinct to somehow avoid it, do something else? So when a task creates those negative emotions, we just don't want to think about it and we want to maybe go and just watch a cat video or go to Instagram, play a video game or just do something else. Distract ourselves. This is procrastination. So essentially, when we have this negative emotion and we don't know how to control or how to handle that emotion, in that process, we are not working on the task which we have to do and not doing so has negative consequences. When all these things are true, then and only then we can technically call it procrastination. All right. Now, once we understand this, surprisingly, this clear understanding actually can give us a clue about how to go about beating procrastination. Because if it is a problem of regulating our emotion, we cannot do it with brute force. Then we have to be smart about it. We have to learn how to handle our negative emotions. So there are a couple of parts to the solution and together what they're trying to do is number one, solution has to, if possible, bring down or avoid that negative emotion. So in the first place, if I do not have anxiety or stress, great, then I'll do the job. Second, even if we have those emotions, we have to learn how to handle them. And third is sometimes the emotion is not necessarily very strongly negative, but it's not even very positive. We don't commit to a timeline. So in my case, like I told you about sending the bank statements, because there is no deadline, there's no timeline, there's still a couple of months to go. I'm just not doing it, which means we have to commit to it. Okay. So these are the things, if we can do these, then we can actually beat the problem or beat this monster of procrastination. So let me go step by step. Okay. Let's start with this big question. What are the things that create anxiety or stress or fear. Now, one of the things that creates anxiety or fear or stress is when the task is too complicated, too humongous, it feels just too much. We feel overwhelmed. Since I've been talking about tax filings, let's take that as an example. Assume that you had to do your own tax filings. 
Now for that, you need to download your bank statements, look at all the inflow of money coming into all your bank accounts, figure out okay, which one is income, which is my dividend from this stock. It's a lot of stuff. And you don't remember and you're afraid, what if I make a mistake? What if I say something which is not true? Can they come and prosecute me? Will they impose a fine on me? All these things, they create immense amount of negative emotion. In fact, that is the reason why a lot of us, we take help from somebody else to prepare our income tax returns. But I'm digressing here. The point is, when the task is huge, the task looks huge at least, it has got too many things, then we feel overwhelmed and that is when it creates a negative emotion. So the step number one is, or the first solution I'm going to give you is, when a task is a big composite task, it has got many, many things inside, very simple, break it down. It's not task one, it's task one to 20. Just break it down into small, small things. So in case of tax filing, it could be as an example. So for me, it could be download my bank statement from SBI. If I have another account, let's say with HDFC, download that bank statement. The third could be get my salary details and so on. Now, when we have these bunch of small, small tasks lined up, your job is not to file income tax statement. Your job is to do task number one. If it is just downloading statement from this bank, that's all it is. It takes five to 10 minutes. Don't worry about the rest of it. They will come subsequently. This is the only task. One task at a time. And if you don't feel like doing this task number two today, that's fine. Schedule some other time. But when we break it down, now it doesn't feel overwhelming. Now that negative emotion either doesn't come or it's not that strong and we can handle it. Second is... There are certain tasks which create dread or massive anxiety. I can give a couple of examples. Remember one example I gave earlier, which is we have to go for a medical checkup and we are afraid. What will the medical checkup result show? Will it show my blood sugar is high? Will I be diagnosed with diabetes? Will some cancer show up? God knows, like all kinds of fears might be hiding inside. That is why a lot of people, they don't go to hospitals and I've seen people who are very well informed, educated, and they understand these things, but they still don't do it because again, it's a problem of emotional regulation. It's not a logical thing we are doing. It's our emotion that is driving us. Alternatively, let's say if you took the tax filing example, let's say you feel like, okay, I have made some mistake and what if they impose a penalty on me? What if they impose a penalty of like one lakh or something like that? Now, when we have any of these big fears it creates a dread and then we keep avoiding it. And the more you avoid, what happens? The dread goes up. So now you have not been for your medical checkup for last six months you're avoiding. And now you're wondering, okay, if I had a problem, by now it must have gotten aggravated. Now your dread is even higher. So how do you face it? Here is what I suggest you do. And this you can apply in general. Whenever you have this fear of things going wrong, something terrible happening. Remember one thing, the fear of unknown is always more than fear of what we have identified and acknowledged and recognized. The fear of unknown is greater than the fear of known or fear of the known, okay? So when you have those fears, what you do is look at the worst case scenario. In fact, I would ask you to take a journal and write, what is the worst that can happen? If I go to the doctor, what's the worst that can happen? If I file the tax returns late and if I have penalty of, let's say, one lakh rupees, what's the worst? Okay, I'll have to pay a lakh. It's painful for sure. But I'll find some way how. Maybe I have sufficient savings for that or I'll find some mechanism. But the point is that when you stop hiding from it, when you face your worst case fears, you realize that, okay, this is the bottom. This is as bad as it can get. And once you have acknowledged that, now the uncertainty is gone, your brain calms down. There's a part of our brain called the amygdala. Amygdala is the part of the brain which fires our anxiety. Amygdala is triggered by uncertainty. So when things are certain or things are less uncertain, now you are less likely to feel anxious, okay? So this is a simple but very, very effective technique which is look at your worst case scenario and think about, okay, if that thing happens, how will I be able to cope with it, write it down? then you will be very likely ready to move on and take the next step. Third scenario is the task may not create that much severe dread, but it can still be kind of aversive. Let's say you have to file expense reports. Maybe your annual performance appraisal is coming up, so you need to fill a form and submit. All these things, they feel a little unpleasant. So it's not a severe negative emotion, but it's not a positive emotion. Okay, then what do we do? 
I do it tomorrow, do it next week, do it on Sunday, do it this. So we always find another time to do it. Now, here's the thing. Here, all you have to do is commit to a specific time or commit to a specific occasion. So it could be on Sunday after I have my breakfast, I'm going to sit for two hours and work on this task. Okay? Now, when you take this decision, you say, okay, this, this sounds simple enough, but then what if I don't feel like doing it? Of course, you will not feel like doing it. So for that, I'm going to give you some techniques. Okay? So there is a technique called WHOOP, which is wish, outcome, obstacle, plan. So I'm going to use that technique here. I'll show you how it works. So think about first is, what's your wish? So your wish is that you wish you could do this task. This task was not pending anymore. Okay? And when that is done, think about how it's going to make you feel. Okay, so this task pending for six months, I know it feels terrible, but if, if I get it done, then there is this burden from my head which is released, I'll feel so much relaxed. Okay, so what I want to do is take a piece of paper and write down, okay, if I do this task, what is the outcome? How will it make me feel? If possible, close your eyes and visualize that feeling. Imagine that burden has gone. Now you have finished it. Okay, then think about what are the obstacles. So on Sunday after breakfast, when you have to work on it, what are the thoughts? So you may have negative thoughts. You may feel like, okay, I can do it in the evening. Let me just go and, you know, maybe watch Netflix. You'll have all those avoidance behaviors. So when those thoughts come, what is my plan? How will I respond to those situations? Write them down. So now you have an if-then plan. If this happens, I'll do this. If something else happens, I'll do something else, right? That plan is there in writing. And then you are much more likely to get it done. In fact, in my case, since I have to send the bank statement, which is pending now for some time, what should I do? This is what I should do. Very simple. The next scenario is something similar to the previous one, where the difference is the previous one, the task was averse. It sort of creates a negative feeling. Now, it's sometimes... The task may not create any negative feeling per se, but it feels unimportant. There are so many other important things. Now, of course, important things have to be done. But if you don't do unimportant things at all, ever, then that's going to be a problem. So there also you need to schedule. So again, the same idea that I shared earlier, commit to a specific time, the idea of implementation intention. Okay, Commit to a time, think about how it will make you feel if you get done, think about the obstacle, think about the plan, the exact same thing. All right. So these are things that can help you handle different kinds of tasks with different level of dread or aversiveness or negativity that they create in your mind. Let's move to another big problem area, which is some of us have this problem of perfectionism. Now, what is perfectionism? Very simple. It is this instinct some people have that if I do something, it has to be right. I cannot afford to make a mistake. Now, it doesn't sound like a problem, but it can become a problem when you take it too far. So there are people who, if they have to send out an email, they will check the email five times. They have to send a project report, they will read every page multiple times just to make sure no comma is missing, no full stop is missing, and they'll do it again and again. Within limits, it's fine, but when you do too much of it, it can start creating anxiety. Now, how can perfectionism create procrastination? Very simple. You have to do a task, and you are scared. What if I make a mistake? That creates anxiety. And when you have that anxiety, what do you do? You say, okay, you know what? I'll work on this later. Let me do something else right now. Whenever you have to take difficult decisions, I have experienced this. When you have to take a tough decision and you know it could go wrong, what is your natural tendency? Ah, let me decide later. It is procrastination because ultimately it is harming you because you're not taking that decision. Now, this is not that easy to crack. So we have to follow a step-by-step -step method. Okay, so the first thing is you have to observe in this case, if you have this perfectionism or this perfectionist tendency, observe what kind of actions do you take when you have to take that action? What is it that you really do? Observe that. So it could be things like when I have to work on my project report, instead I go and read a book or I find something which is lighter or I work on some small task. Now you observe, okay, so this is a pattern. So I have to work on this important project, but it's really hard. I find something easier to work, right? This behavior is driven by your anxiety. Now we have to identify a behavior or an action which is the opposite of that, okay? So here the behavior was, don't work on the main task, find a distraction. So now the alternative behavior would be, work on the task for at least 
10 minutes. That's your goal. Okay. Next is, even when you've written it down, you'll still have that hesitation. So think of it like an experiment. Okay. So right now I have this fear that, okay, if I work on this task, it's going to be very unpleasant. Test it out. So make a timetable that, okay, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, at this, this, this time, I'm going to sit and work on this for 10 minutes as an experiment just to see what happens. How do I feel? You're not trying to complete the task necessarily. You're just testing it. And when you approach it as an experiment, your mind is a lot more open to doing it. And finally, the one thing that comes in the way of a lot of us is when we start procrastinating on small, small tasks here and there, after some time, the story in our mind itself changes. We start telling ourselves, I am a procrastinator. At that point, procrastination has become our identity. When that's your identity, what happens? Now you don't have the confidence. You feel like, I, I can't do stuff. I always procrastinate. So any task that comes, even if it's not very difficult, you already know that I won't do it on time. You feel defeated even before trying. So here, what do we have to do? In your mind, if you tell yourself, I am a procrastinator, first is remind yourself, it is just a story you have made up. You are not a procrastinator. We all procrastinate, but this is an identity that you have formed. This is formed by your own mind. And something that your mind is creating, your mind can also break. So how do you break this identity? For that, very simple. Take some small, small tasks that you can actually get done. And what happens is, whenever we take an action which supports the identity, our identity becomes stronger. And when we take an action which, is, which goes against the identity, it becomes weaker. Your identity is formed by repetitive actions. So you take a small task, like I mentioned earlier, set a time, implementation intention, get the small task done. Now you feel good about it. Then do one more. And over days and weeks, as you keep doing these small, small tasks, Gradually what happens is your sense of identity starts changing. Now you feel like, you know what? I'm not a procrastinator. I got so many things done. And when that confidence comes back, then you'll be able to take up bigger and bigger challenges. Breaking your identity. It's a simple thing, but it's a very, very powerful tool. So this is a simple but very actionable plan that you can use to break your procrastination. Just one more thing I want to share. On this YouTube channel, there is a video I have made earlier, which is, how to train your brain to do hard things. I think that video also will be of interest to you. If you have time, please watch it. Thank you again, and I look forward to seeing you soon in the next video. Thank you.